Well, John, you finally got here. Yeah, I got tied up in traffic. Well, the folks are in box 62. I'm going to make some bets in the next race. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. The horses are now coming out of the paddock. Hello, Grace. Sorry I'm late. Uh, parking trouble and, and confusion. Where are the girls? Well, oh, they didn't come. Oh, I'd like you to know Harriet and Larry Crane, John Hewitt. Oh, Ralph's ran some Chicago. How Mrs. Crane. Do How do you do? How do you do, sir? Well, Ralph was telling us this is your first visit to a racetrack. Yes, that's right. It's my first fling. Ralph will be back in a few minutes. He's our betting commissioner. Yes, I saw him. He told me where you were. I never saw so many people rushing and crowding. Opening day is always that way. Why didn't Diane and Nancy come along? Oh, their car practically fell apart this morning. Old age, I guess. They're trying to get it back on its feet by Monday. How old are your girls, Mr. Hewitt? Diane is 18 and Nancy's 17. Don't get John started on his daughter. He'll never stop. Yeah, all right. Didn't go to win. That was yours. Oh, thanks, John. And here, dear, Cat walked to show. And uh, I'm playing the favorite, Rostabout, on the nose. You've got $2 on my bet, Harriet. I don't want it. I still like Danny's cutaway. That horse has never been on the money. He's only in for the ride. I only wanted you to bet $2 for me. I'd be throwing money away. Horses are approaching. Is there any the special party. reason why you like that horse, Mrs. Green? It's the same initial as our daughter, Dorothy. D.C. Danny's cutaway, Dorothy Crane. There ought to be a law, Hewitt. Look, if Danny's cutaway runs one, two, three, or even fourth, I'll eat the horse. Well, you've eaten a good many horses. <laughs> what horse are you betting on, John? <laughs> Me? Bet on a horse? You think I'm crazy? You mean you're just going to watch the races and not make a bet? Why, is there a law against that? They're all bound running. Out of the gate, Spangler is in front. Gilbert is second. The Dutchman is third. Bingo is fourth. Adlon is fifth. Danny's cutaway is sixth. Roustabout and Catwalk. Roustabout that way, Danny. Danny Mahone kills his leading by two lengths. The Dutchman is second by a half a length. Bingo is third Not by a half a length. Not a boy, Bingo! Roustabout is four. Look at that horse move! Where's Danny's cutaway? Bangler is fifth. Danny's cutaway is sixth. Catwalk and Adlon. There's Danny's cutaway is nowhere. Oh, shut up! In the stretch, Bingo is taking the lead. They all look alike to me. Oh! Number seven. Danny's cutaway. I knew it. I knew it. And I was third. Why, that horse will pay over $30. I don't get it. Railbird Riley didn't give that horse a chance. Neither did Easy Money Matthews. He always does that to me. All right, I'll give you the $30. No, I'd rather have you eat the horse. <laughs> Well, John, you've seen your first horse race. What do you think of it? Well, it seems to me they're only trying to prove that one horse can run faster than another. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Come on, I have to place a bet on the next race. <laughs> Hello, John. Hi, George. <laughs> oh, I want you to meet Ralph Shepard. This is my brother-in-law, George, Ralph. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, your brother-in-law? John was married to my sister who died eight years ago. I don't know what that makes him now, but we still call each other brother-in-law. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, won't you join us? We have an extra seat in our box. Thanks. Yeah. No, I can't. Some people are waiting for me. But, uh, John, I've got some pretty good information on Argosy in the fifth race coming up. He's five to one. Argosy? Argosy? That's with Eddie Osborne up. He's one of the best jockeys in the country. He is? And, John, I happen to know that Osborne is betting on that horse. You do? Really? You can use your own judgment. I, I've got to run. Can't even stay for the big race. I have an appointment in town at 5 o'clock. Bye, John. See you later, Mr. Shepard. Yeah. So long. Hey, who was that? Huh? Oh, uh, John's brother-in-law with a tip on Argosy. Argosy? That's the horse I like. He's good on any kind of a track. I won a big bet on him last year on the slop. Slop? Sure, much. Sloppy going. Oh, oh, oh. Well, Argosy's my bet. How about you, John? No, oh, no, I'm afraid not. Hey, you're an iron man, Hewitt. Sitting through three races and not making a bet. Why, John, you gotta bet a few dollars when you get a hot tip like that. I do? Yeah. Well, certainly. Well, all right. Show me where I can get a two-dollar ticket. All right. Hearing the wire, it's Argosy out in front by a length and a half. Capricorn is second. And it's Argosy by two lengths. Capricorn is second. Wow. I told you so, John. Begin at luck. That's the first money I ever won. That we all collect. Ralph. 
How much do I win? Hmm? Oh, a little over $10. I'll collect close to $200. 200 Yeah. You repeated that race at Bowie. Took the lead and wasn't headed. Why? Uh, how do you know that? Well, there it is. These little figures indicate how many lengths he was out in front. Well, what do those little figures mean? Those are the jockey's weights and those are the post positions. What does that H-Y mean? That's heavy. M-Y is mud and S-L is slow. Very interesting. Say, I have an idea. After the races, let's all have dinner here with me. Uh, don't count on me, Ralph. Dee and Nancy will be waiting for me. Oh, John, you're like an old lady with those girls. They've outgrown their pigtails. They're young ladies now. Oh, Ralph is right. Come along, John. You can telephone the girls later. Yeah, come on, John. Huh? Well, all right, all right. Oh. Well, I'm going to follow Osborne in the big race. He's riding a horse called Bandy Boy. Hey, Bandy Boy can win. He's good for about 20 to 1. Osborne brings in those long shots. 20 to 1? Sure, you can bet your winnings. After all, you can't lose anything. Maybe I will. That $200 could be a down payment on a car for the girls. Come on, John. I'll show you where to cash your ticket. Oh, all right. Boyfriend tonight. Never better. Go ahead. Don't let me interrupt anything. You're not interrupting anything. It's a sports gap. We're about to tune out. Oh, wait a minute. I want to hear that. Among those present in the turf club were Mayor and Mrs. Hughes, Grace and Ralph Shepard, local executive, and his guest, Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence Crane of Chicago, and the personable John Hewitt. An exciting afternoon. Hey. Hey. <clears throat> and among those present was the handsome John Hewitt. You didn't say handsome. The word was personable. The same difference. <laughs> you win a couple of thousand, Dad. I didn't lose. <laughs> I guess nobody's going to introduce us. Oh, to I'm you. sorry, Chuck. Daddy, this is Charlie Nordlinger. He's captain of our. You football. don't have to tell me. Howdy, Chuck. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thanks. I saw you catch that pass and win the championship for Langston High last year. You did? Northwestern and Illinois want him now, Mr. Hewitt. And a couple of colleges on the West Coast. Yeah, and not mention a couple more back east. Well, don't sell yourself <laughs> cheap now, Chuck. Well, hop to it, kids. Oh, uh, what about the car? They said the engine had fallen arches. Don't worry about it, Dad. We can take the bus. The heck you can. You can use my crate any time you want it, Diane. Well, thanks, Chuck. And I'll show for you around town, Butch. You were a long time saying that, Cosgrove. My middle name. I hate it. <laughs> oh, that must be Uncle George. He called a couple of times and said he'd be over around 8.30. Oh. Uncle George, hello. Oh, my Nancy. <laughs> Fine, how are you? Hello, Dee. Getting prettier every day. Hiya, gang. Can't stay more than ten minutes, John. All right, let's go in the kitchen. He made one of her delicious rice puddings today. You lead the way. But no pudding for me. I'm ten pounds overweight. <laughs> Dee, I think Dad's had a drink. Or two, why not? I'll get it. Hiya, Ted. Hi, Hitchy. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. Anybody hear me? Don't I look like somebody? Come on. So you won $190 on my tip. $190 and 60 cents. <laughs> How long has this been going on, George? Nice feeling, isn't it? Wonderful. Add a glass or two of champagne and it's super wonderful. Osborne's a good jockey to follow. Oh, that money I won's going to come in mighty handy. <laughs> the girl's car broke down and I thought I'd look around and see what I could pick up the 47-48 model for. For $190? Well, that'll be the down payment. Let them fix up their car. No, it's on flash legs. It was nine years old when I got it for them, three years ago. John, how do you manage as well as you do on a salary of 6000 a year? Huh? Taxes, two girls to clothe, life insurance, payments on the house, two cars. <laughs> Haven't been able to save anything, have you? I have four $500 war bonds and about uh, $1,100 in cash. And the bright future ahead. You're a magician. <laughs> You shouldn't have passed up this rice pudding, George. That's fattening. <laughs> John, I'm leaving Monday night again to be gone for about a month. Well, maritime insurance is taking me all over the map, but I'm getting great results. Too bad. Uh, I mean about your leaving. Um, well, you see, I figured that you'd be going out to the track this week, and 
I thought if I wanted to place a small bet on my favorite jockey that um, maybe you'd place it for me. <laughs> no problem there. No? I'll give you the name of a bookmaker. I... Bookmaker? One of the best, Ben Kruger. He books all the tracks. I'll, uh, I'll call him Monday morning and okay. Yeah, but uh, those places are apt to be raided, aren't they? Gee, I wouldn't want my name found lying around. Use your initials. It's done every day. I'll okay you as J.H. We'd like a word with you, Uncle George. Oh, no, not tonight, girls. I really have to go. Grandma Irwin just came in, and she's raring for a square dance. Oh, them golden slippers. <laughs> <laughs> I was crazy to come to this house on Saturday night. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Glad to see you, Ma. Oh, never mind that, Marsh. Let's get started. Oh, them golden slippers. <laughs> All right, kids, let's go. Partners, one, two, three, four. All jump up and never come down. Swing your partners round and round. <laughs> Ladies in the center, form a star. Back to your partners, not so far. All join hands and circle eight. Circle eight till you get straight. Promenade. Morning, Miss Davis. Good morning, Mr. Hewitt. Lovely morning, isn't it? Morning. Hi, Ray. Morning, Joe. Hello. Yes, he sent me a copy of that letter. What I had in mind was uh, meeting him halfway. Huh? Well, 90-day uh, extension. I don't like making these foreclosure decisions, John, but our business has certain rules and they must be observed. Have Blake and Shepard proceed immediately. You can take care of the preliminary costs out of the controller's fund. All right, sir. Oh, Mr. Hewitt. Yes? The man from Holden's telephoned. Oh. They looked at the girl's car, but the best they can do on a trade-in is $40. Tell them it's a deal. I'd have taken 20. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll be around right after lights are closed with him. I want that car delivered to the high school before 3 o'clock. Here's the afternoon, Pete. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Dooley. send us the deeds to the properties. We'll have our attorneys check them and uh, get in touch with you next week. All right. Goodbye. Hello, kiddies. Oh, Dad, that car. It's a dreamboat. You like it, huh? Oh, wouldn't. Uh -huh. But you shouldn't have done it. We could have struggled along with Croupy Kate for a while. You're the one that needs a new car. That car of mine is just as good as the day I bought it four years ago. But, Dad, you shouldn't have. You're repeating yourself, Dee. What are we going to do with this man? We've got a father with a Santa Claus complex. <laughs> the whole thing doesn't make sense. It's your birthday and we get the present. Oh, I don't know about that. I got a new polka dot tie and two pair of argyles. Straight from the maker to the wearer. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it, you shouldn't thank me for that car. It was given to you girls by a cute little brown horse. A horse? Mm-hmm. Called Banty Boy. Dad, do you feel all right? Sure. Let me try your pulse. What? Oh, you mean the races last Saturday. You won. Lucky John Hewitt, they called me. <laughs> Dan says you're parked in the red zone. And there's a policeman looking over the car. Oh, oh come on, see at home, Dad. Yes. Is he a young car? Uh. <laughs> yes, Mr. Hewitt? Find out from Danny how they make out. Yes, sir. Oh, and get me... Um, Royal Six. Uh, never mind, I'll use the private line. Hello, this is.
this is Ben Kruger speaking. Uh, this is J.H. Uh, how did Wexford Ladd make out? He won. Really? You win $28. Three in a row? Yeah. You've been betting real money. You'd have a bundle now. <laughs> by the way, J.H., I've got to ask you, how would you like to settle? Daily or by the week? Oh, oh. Well, I'll only be making an occasional bet. Uh, uh, weekly, I guess. All right. I'll have someone contact you every Friday to pay or collect. Where would you like to meet? Well, I have lunch uh, every day between 1 and 2 at uh, Eckert's Grill on 11th Street near Clinton. That's good enough for me. Uh, uh, just a minute. Yeah? Uh, Osborne is riding in the last race today, isn't he? Osborne, yeah, he's up on Saab Sister. It's three to one on the line. Twenty dollars to win. Saab Sister, twenty to win. Okay, J.H., you're on. Right. Hello, J.H. You are Mr. Hewitt. Oh, yes, yes. I'm Mary Slate. Mr. Slate. Kruger sent me. May I? I'm sorry. Thank you. Don't tell me you've forgotten we had an appointment. Oh, no, no. But, um, I wasn't expecting a girl. Any objection? What do you think? In that case, let's get down to business. Four hundred and fifty-one dollars. You must have a good system. Oh, I have. I just shut my eyes and pointed Osborne. Following a jockey, eh? <laughs> That's been done before. But not always so successfully. I think this calls for a little celebration. You like a cocktail? Why not? What have we got to lose? It's Kruger's money. <laughs> Philip. Martinis. Two martinis, please. Five hundred dollar war bond, please. Didn't you convert two of these just about uh, ten days ago? You know you would. Oh, wait and see. We got time. The picture doesn't start until 8.10. <laughs> I like to listen to Dee play and, well, look at her. Oh. What's the matter? You're so corny. Well, look, I don't say things to please you. Aren't you ever coming home, Terry A good mind not to go with him. I'll get it. Hello, John. Hi. Wait a minute. I just happened to be driving by. I... You shouldn't have come here. But 
I had to. When you didn't show up for lunch today, I was afraid that well, something might have happened to you. I'm sorry. I got stuck at the office. I suppose I should have telephoned Mr. Kruger. Mm -hmm. That would have been smarter. Especially since you owe him $600. Oh, don't worry. I'll pay him. Do you think you could get Kruger to carry me for another week? Mm -hmm. Your credit's good. Only you can't place any bets until you settle up. He's very strict about that. He would be. All right. See what I can do tomorrow. You'll manage. Should we have lunch? No, I'll be tied up. How about tomorrow night? All right, with me. Let's make it at my place. 615 Ardmore. Apartment 2A. All right. I'll be there about 9. Good night. Good night, and thanks. Hello, Chester. How do you do, Mr. Hewitt? Is D home? Sure. Come on in. Hello, Chester. Hi, you, Dee. Howdy, Nancy. Chuck Nordlinger, Chester Mitchell. Hi, you. I didn't get the last name. Nordlinger. Chuck Nordlinger. You're supposed to recognize that name and swoon. <laughs> He's last year's high school All-American fullback. Letterman sweater and everything. Fullback? Oh, you mean football. I never go to them. Chester's been away. He's studying dentistry. Yeah, but imagine anybody not liking football. You know, I didn't get this football letter for nothing, you know. I ran a 100-yard dash, and I got it for hockey, and I got it for basketball. Here. Yeah, but hey, well, what are you doing? Unusual bicuspids. Unusual bicuspiders? Now, please, after all. Chester, you remember my grandmother, don't you? <laughs> Hello, Chester. <laughs> oh, sure. How are you, Mrs. Irwin? Hi, please. Mr. Hewitt, I just dropped in to see if Dee would like to go to a picture with me. We were just going to one. Yeah, and we got it right. Where's Teddy, Nancy? I don't know, but we're not going to wait another minute. Well, Chester can go with you, can't he, Dee? Why not? You don't mind, do you, Chuck? Uh, no, not at all. Five minutes to eight. Anchors away. <laughs> Good night, Graham. Good night, dear. Wonderful dinner, Graham. Thank you, dear. Good night, Graham. Thank you. Good night. You managed that very neatly, John. Managed what? You know what. You'd like Diane to have a lot of boyfriends, but to keep her heart free until that young Lochinvar of your dreams comes riding out of the West, <laughs> preferably in a special body Cadillac. Sarah, I want my girls to marry for love, just like their mother and father did. Of course, I wouldn't mind if my sons-in-law possessed intelligence, good looks, mm, sense of humor, Health, wealth, position. Uh, have I overlooked anything? John, when are you going to marry again? I, Mary? Have you been talking to the girls? About that? Yes. They brought it up a few weeks ago. And I was bowled over. Good for them. They're I... right. It had to be very, very dumb indeed not to realize that the reason you haven't remarried is because you do not want to share your love for them with another woman. Sarah, you get the strangest ideas. It's about time you started to consider your own needs, John. It's all right for a man to love his children and want to give them everything possible. But you carry this thing too far. All you live for, all you ever think of is those two girls. Oh, Hiya, Mr. Run, Mr. Hewitt. Where's Nancy? They've gone to the picture. Oh, it's watch them. It's always slow. They only left a few minutes ago. Chester Mitchell is with them. That square? He's tooth happy. Tooth what? <laughs> tooth happy. Ever since he started studying dentistry, all he talks about is teeth. He'll probably do a job in everyone's mouth in that picture tonight. He's not with Nancy, is he? You know where the theater is. What's keeping you? Oh, gosh, so long. This house has tempo. Never without it. <laughs> Too happy. <laughs> That's a new one. Can I done? Yeah, I don't want you driving around alone this time of night. I'll follow you in my car. You do nothing of the sort. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. I'll be home in 20 minutes, and it's only a little after eight. John. Hmm? Remember what I said to you. Good night. Good
Oh, just a minute. Well, so you finally made it. I was beginning to worry again. You or Kruger? I thought you knew me better than that. Oh, lately I don't seem to know anything. Least of all, myself. You do look awfully low tonight. What do you expect? I haven't had a winning day in weeks. I know. I used to look forward to our Friday lunch dates. They were fun. Now I, I'm beginning to feel like a heel. Better than being a chump. You really are in bad shape. This time I think I'll buy you a drink. All right, make it a good one, will you? Cost me six hundred dollars. <laughs> I'll mix it myself. Who knows? Might even be worth it. Take that handicap. Oh, maybe you'll be sorry. <laughs> Mr. Adams. Yes? Mr. Ryan's secretary just called. He's on his way over. Oh. That means no golfing today, my boy. Oh, look, you didn't get that message, Dad. You were called away suddenly. Sorry, Philip. Look, Dad, you haven't seen me in nearly a year. But business comes before golfing, young fella. That's what's wrong with this world. So much work and not enough golf. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you a waistline like that. Well, <laughs> dear. You were still at Princeton. I graduated this week. Well, what do you know? Well, the last time I saw you, you, you were wearing pigtails and, and you had braces in your teeth. Well, you weren't so much yourself four years ago, but you were a better driver. Let's argue about that over lunch. Now, hold on. My sister's half owner of this car, and she's going to want to know who smashed that fender. I'll take her to lunch next week. Now, wait a minute. I don't like being swept off my feet. Now, look, I had enough trouble with my father. Don't you turn me down, too. Tell me a little more about him. He's good-looking, attractive. He has a wonderful smile. And he's slightly mad. Oh, he sounds terrific. There he is now. I've got to see him. Well, Nancy, wait for me. Well, hurry up. Okay, come on. You're Grams. I've heard all about you. I guess I'll be hearing a lot more about you. Yes, and you'll be seeing a lot more of me, too. <laughs> oh, here are the girls now. Nancy, this is Mr. Adams. Make it Philip, will you, Nancy? How are you, Philip? Your father will have to buy you a set of golf clubs, Diane. Oh, that would be a wonderful idea. <laughs> oh. Hello, Chuck. I just thought I'd drop by to see if Dee would like to go to an early show with me. Dee! Oh. Well, you going out tonight? Yes, Chuck. Mr. Adams, this is Charlie Nordlinger. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh I'm, I'm, I'm great. Well... I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you, and good night, and, and, Dick, and, well, good night. He's our local football hero. <laughs> yeah, he just threw that front door for a five-yard loss. <laughs> well, good night, Grand. Good night, dear. Have fun. Thank uh, you. Good night, Dad. I won't be late. All right, dear. Good night, Philip. Good night. Good night, Phil. You mind if I walk out to the car with you? Why, of course not. Come on, Nancy. Well... There's your young lock and bar with special Cadillac body and all. John, stop worrying about Dee taking that job. From the looks of things, she's not going to need it. I wasn't thinking about the job. What were you thinking about, John? The girls. The future. <laughs> Oh, 
off, George? That's wonderful news. Dee marrying into the Adams family. Uh, When's it coming off? In June. Dee wants to be married on her mother's birthday. And in a year or two, Nancy and young Phelps will be saying, I do. There's a lot of happiness in store for those girls. You're not very enthusiastic. George, I've come to you because you're the only one I can trust. I'm in trouble. Serious trouble. Trouble? I've taken $14,000 from the company's funds. You've what? Lost it playing the races. Oh, I won it first. I thought it was a cinch. And then I started to lose. My bonds, my savings, my mortgage payments, everything. And then I took the money from the controller's fund. Oh, I made myself believe it was only a loan. I kept hoping for that one lucky day when I'd, when I'd be able to square everything and quit. Can't believe it. I keep thinking of Dee and Nancy. And what I've done to them. You haven't done anything. Except try to give them the world on a silver platter. Of course, I could borrow a few thousand dollars on my insurance and the house, but... And the bank would want to know why I didn't get it from my own company. Would be a bad move. I've got about 3,000 in cash. Stock's worth about 4,000 more. When's the next audit of the books? Oh, not for about three months. Everything's going to be all right, John. I'm leaving town again for about six weeks. Taking over the Honolulu Territory. I'll be stopping at the Royal Hawaiian. When I get back, I collect 10,000 in bonuses for this year's sales. So, start smiling. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this, George. Of course, it's going to be a, quite a few years before I can pay it back. Forget it. You've done a fine job with those girls. It's about uh -huh. time their uncle started a pigeon and help you. Uh -huh. Of course, John, you're, you're through with the horses. Forever. I can stand a drink. So could you. Nice to see you. Thank you. It's nice to see you. And Mr. Adams? I hope we haven't disturbed you. Not at all. Come in. Thank you. Oh, my, what a charming house. Thank you. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Uh, let me take your hat. Thanks. Uh, we happen to be out in the neighborhood, and so we thought we'd drop in for a five minutes chat. I'm glad you did. Uh, since the Adams and Hewitt plans are about to form a merger, so to speak, we thought that we might as well have the first powwow as soon as possible. Oh, uh, are you alone, John? <laughs> yes. Sunday's always a big day for the girls. Nancy went out for a drive, and Diane, well, Diane is wherever Philip is. <laughs> <laughs> They're inseparable. <laughs> well, first of all, we want you to know that we are very happy. Carlton and I think that Philip is getting the sweetest, most wonderful girl in Langston. He's a very fortunate young man. <laughs> He's a very fine young man. Oh. Well, now, the main reason for our visit is to invite you and the girls to have dinner with us next Wednesday. Thank you, Mrs. Adams. Oh, Margaret now, John, and Carlton. Yeah, I'll try and remember. <laughs> um, Carlton, I don't see any reason for waiting until Wednesday to tell John the good news, do oh. you? Oh. Hmm? oh, well, uh, uh, John, yeah. I, um, I just want to tell you that in a week, you will assume the position of general manager of the firm at a salary of 20000 a year with a block of stock you can pay for at your pleasure. I hardly know what to say, Carl. <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> well, this certainly calls for a celebration. A uh, little port, Mrs. Adams. I mean, Margaret. Oh, yes. thank you, John. Carlton. Yes, please. Uh, I've arranged with Taylor and Dean to order the books a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow? Uh, that's the fifth? Yes, that's right. If when they're through, I'll be young. will take your place, and you'll move into the new offices. Well, here's to you, John. Yeah. <laughs> Mmm. Say, this is good. Margaret, you're missing something. <laughs> Carlton, uh, it'll take me at least ten days to get things in shape for Harvey, and uh, with a holiday coming this week, um, couldn't we have the audit, say, on the uh, 18th? No, John. No, I've made all the arrangements. Well, we must be going. Come along, Margaret. <laughs> Do you know that I have a dress with a big bustle, just like that photograph that belonged to my grandmother? Uh, no. Isn't it wonderful we don't wear those things today? Oh, <laughs> I say so. Yeah, well, we'll see you Wednesday night. All right, then. We'll... <laughs> bye Goodbye, bye. John. Goodbye. Oh, 
Sarah. Have you heard from George? Yes, I had a wire from him this morning. From San Francisco? No, he was detained in Hawaii. They leave there today and expect to get home sometime next month. How are the girls? Wonderful. They're just fine. Fine. I'll call them later on the evening. All right, Sarah. Goodbye. Goodbye, John. I'd like to place a call to Honolulu. I'll give you the overseas operator. Hello? Mr. Hewitt? Yes. On your call to George Irwin, Royal Hawaiian Hotel, Honolulu. Mr. Irwin sailed for San Francisco today. Hello? Did you hear me? Yes. Oh, how have you been, J.H.? Haven't heard from you in a long time. Oh, I, I've been pretty busy. Uh, this is Saturday. I thought I'd call you before the banks close. I want to make a large-sized wager, and I thought possibly you'd want me to put up the cash. Oh, no, yeah. Your credit's good with me. I want to bet Great Day in the Bayou Handicap in New Orleans. Great Day? Seventh race at Beauregard Park. How much? Two thousand. To win. To... Wait a minute, J.H. I didn't figure you wanted to bet that kind of money. She's seven to one in the line. Uh, I'll put up the cash. Oh, no. I told you your credit's good. I'll put you on for half of it. And win or lose, we'll settle Monday. But I... I want to bet the whole thing. Well, you know how it is when you've got a strong hunch. I'm sorry, that's the best I can do for you. Look, J.H., I've only got three phones, and you're holding up one of them. Yes, but I will... Reservation, please. United Airlines. What's the next plane out to New Orleans? The twelve fifty arriving in New Orleans at four ten this afternoon. Can I get a seat on that plane? We have two cancellations. We'll hold a ticket for you, but you must pick it up by twelve fifty. 
afternoon. All right, I'll be there. The name is you. Is Ramsey. John Ramsey. Very well, Mr. Ramsey. Ask for Miss Hall. Oh, Miss Hall. I have to get back to Langston tonight. Is there a, is there a plane out of New Orleans this evening? Yes, 6 o'clock, arriving here at 9.40. Shall I reserve a seat for you? Yes, please. Fine, I'll have everything ready when you get here. Thank you very much. Oh, Miss Pearson, call the house and tell the girls I won't be home for dinner. Uh, I'm looking at a piece of property about 30 miles the other side of Bristolport, and I won't be back till about 10 o'clock. Yes, sir. Faster? Buy you handicap goes in half an hour. Sorry, mister. We're crowding the limit already. But I flew all the way from Langston for this race. I can't afford to miss it now. Look, this ain't no jet job. I told you I'd get you there in time, and I will, so relax. How much further is it? We'll be there in a minute. Last bear I had was in this much of a hurry. Had twins in the back seat ten minutes later. <laughs> Mind telling me great day's number? Great day? Great day's number three pair and a seven to one. We got our last four bucks on Kelly's boy. That's my name, Kelly. And he's drunk, too. So why? What's the matter, pal? You lose your program? Oh, I just got here. Just got here? Just got here? <laughs> I think you got something there, pal. You can only be clipped for two reasons. Yes, sir, the man's got something. Look at him. He's got the hundred dollar window. Number three, ten tickets. Three, ten, ten. Attention, please. The horses are in the starting gate. You have to keep that eye open, folks. Keep your eye open. Hey, who's that black horse acting up? It's number three. Great day. Looks like he's full of run. Keep that out open, folks. They finally got him in a stall. The flag is up. They're off. Fast running. At the start is conservation. Breaking on top. Sun Tan is second. Kelly's boy is third. Top Rap is fourth. Jet Deed is fifth. Great day is sixth. Winslow, best man, and good green. Conservation leading the field by two lengths. Suntan is second by a neck. Kelly's boy is third by a half. Chesty is fourth by a neck. Top brass is fifth by one length. Great day is sixth by a half a length. Good green, Winslow, and best man. Around the clubhouse third, it's conservation by a half a length. Suntan is second by a length. Top brass is third by a neck. Kelly's boy is fourth by a length. Chesty is fifth by a half a length. Great day is next by a neck. Best man, good green, and Winslow. Into the back stretch, it's conservation by a half a length. Suntan is second by two and a half lengths. Top brass is third by one. Kelly Boy is fourth by a half. Chesty is fifth by a neck. Great Day is sixth by one length. Best man, good grief, and Winslow. Around the far turn, it's conservation by a length. Top brass is second by two. Suntan is third by a neck. Kelly Boy is fourth by a half a length. Chesty is fifth by a half. Great Day is sixth by a neck. He's caught in a pocket. Yeah, he isn't going to get anywhere. He should have made his move on the far turn. Into the stretch. Conservation now leading by two lengths. Top brass is second by a length. Kelly's boy is third by a half a length. Suntan is fourth by a length. Chesty is fifth by a half. Great day. Pocketed on the rail is sixth. Best man, good grief, and Winslow. In the stretch, it's conservation by a length. Top brass is second by a length and a half. Kelly's boy is third by a half. 
Suntan is fought by one length, Testy is skipped by a half, and now Great Day has found an opening. He's coming to the outside. Here comes Great Day. He's running over horses. He's fifth. He's fourth. He's third and charging at the leaders. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, conservation. Now it's conservation and Great Day. Winner, didn't you? Right on the nose. I won a grand on the handicap last year. Hey, uh, you couldn't spare some of your good luck for a guy that really needs it, could you? Say a couple of bucks worth? Things are not going so well, huh? <laughs> no, you know how it is. Up one season, down the next. I'll get even someday. Not around here, you won't. Gee, thanks, mister. Take a tip from a guy who knows. You can't beat the ponies. Where's that bar? Right over there. Never mind the change. Thanks. You must have had the winner. I did. That Osborne's a riding fool. Best jockey in the country today. Well, hi, you fella. You had the winner, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. hey, we brought you luck. How about a little drink? Sure. Uh, see what the gentleman wants. A bourbon for me. And sing for him. With water? No. <laughs> Make them double. Hey, here, here. Who, who are you playing in the next race, pal? Not playing anything in the next race or any other race ever again. What? You were right, Tom. They put up the inquiry sign. Uh, what, what, what is that you said? The jockey on conservation claimed a foul. He's bumped in the stretch. Well, they'll take it away from Great Day, all right. Well, you ain't got nothing to worry about, pal. Give Your attention, please. For interference in the stretch, Great Day is disqualified and placed second. Conservation is declared the winner. The result is now declared the official. Can she cook, Teddy? Oh, anybody can boil hot dogs and cook potatoes. But uh, I have to admit, these were extra good. <laughs> Don't let me interrupt. But remember, it's getting late. Oh, Dad. Dee said she'd be home about 10 days. All right.
thousand dollars. I'm sorry, John. I've never seen such awful luck. Well, there's one consolation. Can't get any worse. Can you place another thousand for me today? If you insist. Wellington, six to New Orleans to win. We'll settle up tomorrow. We should never gotten into this. Now you're stabbing at long shots. Why don't you just get out, take a loss, but pull out now? I can't. I'm in too deep. What if... What if I could help pull you out? Maybe even get you a little ahead in one afternoon. Would you promise to quit then? You know I would. Miracles don't happen anymore. I'm not talking about miracles. You never play information horses, do you? You mean tips? I mean information. There are some guys who never lose. They keep away from the track. Sometimes they only make a couple of bets a month. But they always collect. My brother Rick took over $100,000 from the book last year. But your brother Rick keeps his information to himself? I don't know. He might loosen up for a friend of mine. A very special friend. Do you want me to talk to him? Would you? He's staying at the Winthrop Hotel. I'll go over and have a talk with him. Meet you in the lobby at five? All right, I'll be there. What about that thousand at New Orleans? Oh, forget it. If Rick cut you in a thousand dollars, it'll look like chicken feed from now on. And if he doesn't? You forget, darling. You're my very special friend. Hiya, babe. Well, make yourself at home. No, thanks. I can only stay a couple of months. How do you like me without the mustache? Oh, I'd like you anyway. Oh, darling, I've missed you so much. Hasn't been easy for me either. I came as soon as I got your wire. I knew you would. And after the setup, honey, we can stick together for good. You, uh, sound like you've hooked a real chump this time. Made to order. Started out as a two-dollar better, then he went up to two-hundred, then six-hundred. Last week he hit the thousand mark. Really hot, huh? Oh, he's steaming. And here's the interesting part. He handles all the cash for the biggest banking firm in Langston. You mean he's dipping in the till? Up to his elbows. He wanted to place another thousand-dollar bet on a fifteen-to-one shot today. So he must be hooked for plenty. I talked him out of it. Why should we let Kruger take everything? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. When do we move in on him? Today. I've already laid the groundwork. You're my brother, Rick. You're staying at the Winthrop Hotel. I've reserved a suite. <laughs> Have you picked a horse? Rickety Racks, New Orleans, tomorrow. That's what I love about you, baby. You only play the sure things. This is it. Come in. Hello, Sis. <laughs> Hello, Rick. You're late. I know. We stopped for a cocktail. This is John Hewitt. Oh, this is a very special friend. I've been looking forward to this meeting. Thank you. So have I. Oh, sis, I'm a little rice this evening. I'm going to have dinner with some friends, but please sit down. Why? Well, I don't want to detain you. Oh, it's all right. I'm waiting for a phone call from New Orleans anyway. Oh. Tell me, Mr. Hewitt, uh, you don't happen to be a relative of a friend of mine. Uh, Alan Hewitt of Chicago? No. Oh, I should have mentioned that before. Sure, he deals with stocks and bonds. You must have heard of him. No, I don't think I have. Well, I'll introduce you sometime. <laughs> you see, he and uh, several other of my associates are thinking about building a big sports arena here. But you've got to keep that under your hat. 
I didn't even hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I like a man who can keep his mouth shut. Oh, excuse me. Hello. You asked to be called at six, Mr. Slade. Thank you. Sis tells me you want to get on the gravy train. Well, I... Uh... Oh, Rick, must you put it that way? Well, can you think of a better way to put it? You see, we got a horse going tomorrow in New Orleans. Riggedy racks. Of course, it'll be a short price, but it's all set. That's what this phone calls for. Oh, excuse me. Hello? New Orleans? Yes. Hello, Jackson? Now, tell me. Is everything all set for tomorrow? Good boy, good boy. Yeah, now, look. You and Mac bet $100,000 with the Eastern bookies. I'll distribute the same amount between Chicago and the West Coast. Yeah. Now, tell me, what's the price? Even money. Sure. What suits me fine should be one to five. <laughs> All right, now, look, don't forget this. Don't do anything tomorrow until 20 minutes before post time. Got it? Thanks, Al. Same to you. Goodbye. Well, that's how it's done, Mr. Hewitt. Cigarette? No, thanks. Well, I put you down for 20000 but you've got to have the money here by 12.30 tomorrow. 20000 Well, 10% of that goes to the jockeys. Sure, they got to live, too. <laughs> well, of course, if you feel you can't handle it, we'll forget it. Well, oh, well, of course he can handle it. It'll mean so much to both of us. Mr. Hewitt. Yes? I'm glad I caught you before you left. Mr. Adams would like to see you. Well, I... Uh, all right. And when this reorganization plan is put into effect next week, Mr. Hewitt will take over many of the duties heretofore assumed by this office and Mr. Barlow. Any more questions? I'm sorry to have kept you here so late. Well, that'll be all. And thank you. Rick? Who'd you expect, the crime commissioner? No, thank you. It looked like a million dollars. Make that 20,000. Did you get the money? Every dollar of it. The race should be just about over now. I'll try to get the results. Oh, uh, here. Pack this in my suitcase and carry this in your coat pocket. You can sure pick your men, honey. And Mr. Shepard said he'd call you in the morning. Oh, thank you, Miss Pearson. That's all now. You may go home. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Langston Chronicle. Sports, please. Sports. Carol speaking. Do you mind giving me the result of the sixth race at New Orleans? Winner was Weep Softly. Tripolero was second. McQuaid was third. Rickety Racks wasn't in the money? Rickety Racks was a late scratch. Thank you. Mr. Slate, 816. Mr. Slate checked out this afternoon. Are you sure? I'm positive. He checked out at 430. He left no forwarding address. Slate there? No, she quit today. She's leaving town tonight or tomorrow. But she might be calling in for a message, though. Anything I can do for you? Never mind. I'll reach her.
about the ticket. They're holding them at the airport. Non-stop to Mexico City and then to Acapulco. Haven't you finished packing yet? Not quite. Well, you better hurry up. We haven't got much time. Now, that about does it. Okay, let's go. I'll be ready as soon as I get my fur. Just in case. Going somewhere? John. Get back in that apartment. Sure, sure. Just take it easy with that gun. That's far enough. Drop those bags. You have to keep that thing pointed at us? John, you're making a big mistake. Not anymore, I'm not. I want that $20,000 you took from me. All right, so you're smarter than I thought. You still better make a deal with it. I don't make crooked deals. Oh, no. I suppose that 20000 was yours, just like the money you lost to Kruger. <laughs> You're a bigger crook than either of us. Hand it over. You get no argument from me. When it comes to firearms, I pass. Give it to him. Only 10,000 here. Where's the rest of them? In this bag on top of my clothes. Open it up. In the library here, sir. Anna, call Dr. Fisk. Tell him to come at once. Mr. Hewitt's been shot. What's wrong? What happened? He's been shot, sir. We sent to Dr. Fisk. John, how did it happen? Oh, John, you're badly hurt. No, no, don't move. Put your head back on the chair and rest. Dr. Fisk lives only a few streets from here. Uh, Brandy. Yes, sir. John, who? Margaret and Philip. Where are they? They've gone to the concert with Dee. I must speak to you, Carlton. Alone. Uh, that'll be all right. Yes, sir. Yes, John. That's the firm's money, Carlton. Twenty thousand dollars. I took it from the vault to play the races. John, do you realize what you're saying? I, I must be quickly half of Send the police to 510 Mapleton Drive. A man has been shot. Yes. I'm still $16,000 short. I tried too hard on it back. I made up my mind. 
I'd never play another race. I... I wasn't thinking of you alone, Carl. I was thinking of my two girls. Of the unhappiness and disgrace I was bringing upon them. Please be kind to them. I know I don't deserve any pity or any mercy. But they do. My two girls do. They're not like me. They always took after their mother. She had strength and character. They're fine girls. But you can only find it in your heart to spare them. Anna called the police, sir. I'll phone for an ambulance. This way. Were they able to talk? Where'd that money come from? Uh, uh, this man is uh, John Hewitt, the comptroller of my firm. Uh, tonight I needed $20,000 in cash to uh, put through a very important deal. So I, uh, I got him to go to the, uh, the company's vault and bring it to me. On his way here, he was held up and robbed. But he, uh, he managed to follow them to their apartment and carrying the company's gun, which he always does under these circumstances, he uh, confronted them. One of them shot him and in self-defense, he, he killed them both. <clears throat> I'll call homicide. John, this will be our secret. No one else would ever know. Thank you, Gordon. You made me very, very happy. We took enough pictures of the wedding. I want a good selection for the newspapers. I've got enough to fill the whole Sunday supplement. Good. Now, how about one of the happy couple with all the people on the porch? For what you're paying, I'd follow this honeymoon clear to Niagara Falls. <laughs> oh, here they come. Hold it. Hold it, everybody. We're going to take a picture. Hold it. That's Nancy's the cutest thing. You're sure you don't mind her coming to live with us? No, oh, what would we do without her? You know what Graham's always says? John Hewitt's daughters go together like cornflowers and summer rain. That's the way he always wanted it. Dad would have been proud of us, Dad. Just as proud of us as I am of him.